Welcome to another lecture by Medical Medics, Learning Made Easy. Syphilis, the complete lecture. Please remember to share, like, and subscribe for more weekly videos. So in this lecture, we will begin with a general introduction to syphilis. We will talk about stages, pathophysiology, potential complications. We will then compare normal versus pathological. We will then present a case example, discuss diagnoses and treatment, and end with a summary. And as always, remember to check our high-yield review, especially for medical students. Now, syphilis is a chronic sexually transmitted infection, or STI, caused by the bacterium Treponema pallidum. Now, it progresses through distinct stages with unique symptoms and can lead to very severe complications if left untreated. So the causative agent is Treponema pallidum, and it is a thin, spiral-shaped or corkscrew-shaped bacterium, also known as a spirochete, and it is a gram-negative bacterium. You can see it illustrated right here. Now it primarily spreads through sexual contact, but it can also be transmitted from mother to baby during pregnancy. We call that congenital syphilis. Now, something else worth mentioning is evasion techniques. What's interesting about the bacteria Treponema pallidum is it, it divides slowly, which delays an immune response. Furthermore, the bacterium lacks certain proteins on its surface, making it harder for our immune cells to recognize and attack it. Now let's move on to the stages of syphilis. So it begins with primary syphilis. Now primary syphilis is characterized by a painless sore, also known as a chancre, at the site of infection. So the first sign of syphilis will be a small painless sore, usually found on the genitals, mouth or anus where the bacteria entered. We then have secondary syphilis, which involves skin rashes, swollen lymph nodes, and flu-like symptoms. So the second stage brings a body-wide rash, often found on the palms and soles of our feet, and flu-like symptoms like fever and aches. And you can see that illustrated right here. Now, if it's left untreated, syphilis will then go into latent syphilis. Now, this is a stage or phase with no symptoms. This is where the infection becomes hidden in the body. And during the latent stage, where the person has no symptoms, the bacteria are still present and could later reappear. And if they do, we then enter tertiary syphilis. Now, tertiary syphilis can develop years later, affecting the heart, brain, and other organs, leading to serious damage. So in the final stage, syphilis causes severe damage to vital organs, including brain and heart, and these can be indeed life-threatening. So again, we have the entry and initial infection. We then have our primary stage, secondary stage, latent, and tertiary. So let's take a more detailed look at the pathophysiology of syphilis. So it all begins with entry and initial infection. So treponema pallidum enters through small breaks in the skin or mucous membranes, often during sexual contact. We then enter primary stage. So we have the formation of this so-called chancre because the bacteria will multiply. They will multiply at the entry site, forming this painless sore called chancre. Now, this sore heals on its own, but it signals an active infection. Furthermore, we then have the spread through the bloodstream, so the bacterium spreads via the bloodstream to other parts of the body, leading to systemic symptoms. And again, left untreated, we then move into the secondary stage. So we will see widespread symptoms, including skin rashes, flu-like symptoms, and swollen lymph nodes. 
Now, we will also see a very characteristic symptom for secondary stage syphilis, which is rash on palms and soles. And this is a very hallmark sign of um, secondary syphilis. So if you meet a patient, you see these rashes on their soles and their palms, think syphilis. Now, if left untreated, again, continues on to the latent stage. So this is where the infection becomes dormant, showing no symptoms, but remains in the body. Now, possibly years later, we then enter the tertiary stage. And what will appear here are called gummus, or gummus, however you want to pronounce it. These are soft tissue lesions that can form in organs, in bones, and skin, causing tissue damage. Now, these gummas are destructive um, lumps that can appear in these different organs. Furthermore, another important part of the tertiary stage is that it can lead to heart problems like aortitis, it can cause severe brain damage, so neurosyphilis. Essentially, the final stage can lead to potentially deadly complications. So let's look at some of these potential complications of syphilis. Well, one of them is neurosyphilis. What has happened here? Well, the bacteria has invaded the central nervous system, leading to, for example, meningitis, tabes dorsalis, or general paresis. Treatment, you will see a recurrent theme here of penicillin. Another one is cardiovascular syphilis, so inflammation of the vasa visorum, leading to aortitis, ascending aortic aneurysm, for example. Another important one worth mentioning is congenital syphilis. So through transplant, um, transplacental infection, we can see skeletal, dental, neurologic, and skin defects. Again, treatment, penicillin. We could also mention ocular syphilis. So you have the bacteria invading the uveal tract, leading to uveitis, optic neuro uh, neuritis, potentially to vision loss. Now let us just briefly repeat then the normal versus the pathological findings with syphilis. So in a healthy body, we should see no sores or rashes. There should be no tissue damage and there should be normal immune function. Patient with syphilis infection, we would expect painless sore or chancre if it's primary syphilis. Rash on palms and soles if we've moved into secondary syphilis. Furthermore, tissue damage or cardiovascular and brain complications. Now we're talking about tertiary syphilis. Furthermore, immune evasion by trypanema pallidum leading to persistent infection. Now let's briefly take a look at a case example. So we have a 28-year-old male. He is complaining of persistent rash on his hands and feet. He presents with low-grade fever and swollen lymph nodes. His sexual history confirms that he has had unprotected sexual contact with multiple partners in the past year. We do a physical exam and we find rashes on palms and soles consistent with secondary syphilis. Furthermore, we look at the lymph nodes and we see that they are swollen, indicating a systemic infection. A simple and clear case of secondary stage syphilis. So how do we go about diagnosing syphilis? So we begin with the clinical presentation. We will see symptoms like the painless chancre, consistent with primary syphilis, or a body-wide rash on palms and soles, key signs for secondary syphilis. Furthermore, we do serological testing, so we can do non treponemal tests like the RPR or the venereal disease research laboratory tests used for initial screening. We can also do treponemal tests, so we can confirm it with, for example, fluorescent treponemal antibody absorption, which will help us detect antibodies specific for or to treponema pallidum. 
Then we can do direct detection using dark field microscopy. So a sample from the Schenker can be examined under a microscope to detect the bacterium. So again, the uh, painless sore and characteristic rash are important clues pointing to syphilis. The non-treponemal tests, these tests screen for antibodies produced in response to syphilis. It's like finding fingerprints of the actual bacteria. And then for direct detection, dark field microscopy actually visualizes the bacteria directly from a sore, confirming the infection on the spot. Now, we treat syphilis primarily using antibiotics like penicillin G benzathine, and we give it as a single intramuscular injection. This is the standard treatment for all stages of syphilis. And we give 2.4 million units for early syphilis and additional doses for later stages. Now, penicillins inhibit bacterial cell wall synthesis, and they do it you can also follow the illustration here. They do it by binding to penicillin binding proteins. And this will lead to cell lysis. And it makes it very effective against the causative agent, so treponema pallidum. Ergo, the penicillin interferes with bacterial cell wall synthesis, causing the bacteria to rupture and die. Good. Now, we also have alternative treatments if the patient is penicillin allergic. We have doxycycline or tetracycline. For those allergic to penicillin, we give doxycycline 100 milligrams orally, twice daily for 14 days. Now, this group, the tetracycline antibiotic group, which doxycycline belongs to, um, these tetracyclines, like doxycycline, inhibit bacterial protein synthesis. And you can see it here, illustrated. So it inhibits bacterial protein synthesis by binding to the 30S ribosomal subunit. And it makes it, therefore, an um, alternative treatment for syphilis. Now, what it does is doxycycline blocks the bacteria's protein production and it stops it from growing. Excellent. We then have monitoring and follow-up. So we do repeat serology tests, follow-up tests confirming that the treatment has worked, making sure that syphilis is no longer present in the body. So the uh, testing or repeating serology tests should be done at regular intervals to ensure that the infection has been eradicated. Furthermore, evaluation of sexual contacts, so sexual partners should also be tested and treated to prevent reinfection or further spread. Some other clinical tips could be always test for HIV when diagnosing syphilis. Make sure to know that penicillin is always, always first-line treatment, even in pregnancy, for example. Another interesting clinical tip is the so-called jarish herxheimer reaction. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but let's go with that. Now, that Herxheimer reaction could actually occur after treatment. And you would see symptoms like fever, chills, myalgia, etc. Because this jarish herxheimer reaction is actually an acute, transient, inflammatory response that occurs within 24 hours after starting antibiotic treatment for these uh, infections, like, for example, syphilis. Because what happens is that when we give the treatment early on, we will have a rapid lysis of the bacteria, right? Remember the mechanism of action of the penicillin, rupturing and destroying the bacteria. Now, this rapid lysis of it will release uh, endotoxin-like substances from it. And that leads to a reaction. 
So you would see the fever, chills, headaches, uh, and it typically starts within maybe 12 hours or 6 to 12 hours, resolves within 24 hours. You manage it with supportive care like antipyretics or fluids. Whatever you do, and this is a high yield tip, whatever you do, do not stop the antibiotics because this is not an allergic reaction to penicillin. So do not stop treatment. So in summary then, syphilis is a chronic progressive infection caused by treponema pallidum, which is a gram-negative spirochete. It affects the body in distinct stages. Now syphilis is a STI that worsens over time if it's untreated, moving through these different stages with different unique symptoms at each stage, including the primary, syphilis, secondary, latent stage, and tertiary stage. So the bacteria spreads from the initial sore to the bloodstream, causing systemic infection and eventually tissue damage. And of course, if left untreated, causes can cause severe organ damage. We diagnose it through symptom observation, blood tests, and direct microscopy. Treatment, penicillin G is the treatment of choice, with alternatives available for penicillin allergic patients, like doxycycline. Of course, other considerations to prevent spread are important, like safe sexual practices, routine STI screening, awareness campaigns, partner notification and treatment, etc., etc. So we have now arrived at the high yield review. If you're a student preparing for exams, make sure you pause here and study. And that's the end of this lecture. Hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting. If you did, please share, like, and subscribe for more weekly videos.